Welcome to Gearbox Talk, brought to you by Go Wild. This show is dedicated to how-tos and answering your questions about outdoor gear. I'm your host, Brad Luttrell, and I'm also the co-founder of a little app called Go Wild. And just as we founded Go Wild to help find answers for people, we founded Gearbox Talk to help people find the right gear for the job. You know, really, gear can be intimidating. And honestly, sometimes gear is the most intimidating part of, a, of a, any outdoor challenge, any outdoor pursuit. So we're trying to fix that with this show. We're trying to bring in experts who can help you get better at what you love to do or what you're trying to love to do, whatever you're trying to get into. So in uh, addition to founding Go Wild and this show uh, with a bunch of other great people, of course, I'm not the only one at work here, but in addition to co-founding this, I have a confession I am fanatical about barbecue. Like, I love it so much that when I go hunting and fishing and I get something, I am probably as excited about the butchering and the processing of that meat, like as excited about that portion of the process as I was the hunting and the fishing. I'm dead serious. Like, I I love, love, love butchering and cooking wild game. Seriously. So today I have Jeremiah Dowdy, a guy who is going to talk about smoking barbecue. Now, this is not just about wild game. Some of you are going to be surprised about that on how much we talk about other types of meat, like the number of times pork butts, like cooking as many as like 100 pork butts, the number of times that comes up might surprise you. We're going to talk about smoking and grilling pork, briskets, dogs, burgers, steaks, you name it. So this is really a more a wider reaching show than you might have expected from Jeremiah Dowdy, who's known for wild game and is great at wild game, but we're tackling barbecuing as a whole. We're going to work through ceramic smokers versus pellet smokers. We're going to tell you a few tools that you need along the way, thermometers. We're going to talk about some things that you probably don't need. All that's going to come out in this show. And you know, I don't, I don't care how much you think you know about smoking meat. You're, you're probably going to learn something because Jeremiah is a incredibly knowledgeable guy. And I know at the end of it, I got really excited from one in particular tip that he, that he dropped. So stick around to see what that was. If you have not yet subscribed to this show, then first shame on you. Seriously, this is the part where we'll do a moment of silence to shame you. All right. Now it's time to fix that. If it's YouTube or a podcast, I want you to subscribe. And the, the reason you're going to do that is first, well, I, I need you to not hurt my feelings. It's very clear that I'm emotionally unstable. It's why I, I grew out this attention getting mustache because I need it. I need attention. Why else would I have this thing on my face? Seriously. But really, if you subscribe, you're going to get all of the up to upcoming content, all of the how-tos, and you'll get better at what you love to do or what you're trying to love to do or what you're trying to learn. So remember, if you want to suck less just subscribe. It's super easy. All right, that's it. It is time for some Gearbox Talk with Jeremiah Dowdy. Got my buddy Jeremiah Dowdy on Gearbox Talk, a show dedicated to helping people find the right gear for their outdoor pursuits. Welcome aboard, Jeremiah. Hey, man. Thanks for having me. Dude, it's like a, it's an ongoing competition to see who can have the best Gearbox uh, Talk backdrop. And I think like the Hoffmans were doing really... Cody Rich had a cool backdrop. Then then the Hoffmans came in and, you know, Lynn and Lacey had a bunch of taxidermy, but I think you're giving them a run for your money with, with your backdrop there. What do you got back there? Uh, that's all just the random stuff my wife won't let me have in the house. <laughs> <laughs> so leftovers. That was the first turkey I ever shot. That was a Hawaiian ram. These are just some Texas. This this one right here is a uh, it's a unicorn with a twenty one yeah. inch single horn, but never grew another one. Dude, I love stuff like that. Like I'm kind of more into the the weird, freaky uh, Euro mounts than than something that's like big and majestic. I like the ones that got a good story to them. Oh yeah, and then. 
I don't know, just random turkey feather. This is my wife lets me do whatever I want in the garage. So yeah, yeah, that's awesome. And then uh, black rifle case with ammo in it. Who knows? I don't know. You're prepared just, for whatever, man. Well, I am. I'm sad that you and I don't like. We don't have the turkey that you and I shot together. Uh, not at the same time, but like on a hunt together because we didn't get to do that hunt this year because of the pandemic. But we'll 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 do a whole other show where we cry about that. Uh, and, oh, and, I'm and still we'll... crying about it, <laughs> dude. I I felt so bad for the winner of that sweepstakes. So for anybody that doesn't know, Jeremiah and I we promoted the heck out of this hunt. And he was doing a national tour, going to all these different places, had a whole bunch of brands that were super excited to work with him on this. We were one of them. And we did a sweepstakes. We, we, we had thousands of people entered to win a chance to go on this hunt in Kentucky. And we had a guy in Michigan win and he was so pumped. And I, I like, I was heartbroken to call him and be like, Hey man, the hunt's off. <laughs> Dude, I was heartbroken too, because I mean, like I said, it was we we literally started off our hunt in Mexico. Yeah. Yeah. As, you guys were already we're, on your way. Oh yeah. Yeah, we were flying home and we we're in the airports and everyone's like the world's shutting down we're like what the world's shutting down yeah we were in right. mexico for a week out of service yeah didn't and tony, tony got on a plane and had to turn like turn around yeah, on he, the plane right yeah yeah he left two days later for argentina and they landed in argentina and said you got to go home so him and his family literally flew flew 17 hours spent the night flew 17 hours home I, and then i would maybe cry to, from that too <laughs> And they got, then they got to Florida and they had to quarantine themselves for 14 days because they were in a different country. Yeah. So it was, it was nuts. It was one of those deals where, but we, all our sponsors are still on board next year. We still plan it. All the outfitters we're going to work with, everyone's on board. So yeah, we'll do it again. And, and Kevin's yeah. super pumped to come down. He ended up getting a turkey with his son and I, 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 he might've gotten two this year. And I ended up, I had to finally scored on this property that we were going to hunt, man. I had, um, it was a Jake, but at this point, after two years of getting skunked, last year I didn't really put in a good effort on turkeys, but the year before I did, and I got skunked, and uh, so I, I got a, ended up getting a Jake. Did, did you get to do much other turkey hunting before or after that started, or was that kind of it uh, for you? No, I, the only ones I could do was California. So yeah. we, went, we went up north to a friend's mom's property where we knew we weren't going to get hassled, Yeah, and we got his th them all birds. I didn't get a shot at one because I was too busy helping yeah. everybody else out. Then I went up to Julian by us and I got harassed and sent home for being outside in the wild and yeah, man, even, well, even though I had a face mask. And so then we went home and then I went up North a couple of times. And so we, we, we got a couple birds, but nothing like the 14 that was on the list of trying to get this year. I'll say, I know you were worried about coming to Kentucky from the travel restrictions. Kentucky ended up, I, I didn't only know if I ever told you this, Kentucky ended up not allowing anybody from out of state right. to come in and Turkey hunt. They shut it off all, still, entirely. There's still states that are not allowing non-resident hunters. Like yeah. this year in Wyoming, I mean, I put in every year for Wyoming for yeah. an antelope. And this year in Wyoming, they were up like 37% because they're one of the only states that are still allowing yeah. like non-res non hunters. There's yeah. like zero leftover tags in the whole state. There's I think yeah. there's like a thousand buck tags for antelope. And there's usually like 10, 10 to 11,000. So. Well, the, so Wyoming's a great transition into because it's kind of your origin story on a lot of what you do it's, it, it goes back to a lot of the beginning and I, I you know you and I met back in 2017 and it impressed me then and it still does today on and you just said it like how much you really focus on helping people learn you know you didn't even get a turkey because you're really helping other people go after birds this year and I really wanted to kick this off with a snapshot of, of how you basically quit a blossoming restaurant career to do what you're doing today to really teach people how to hunt and then how to process and cook that game. Can you give us a little snapshot of, of that origin story there? Yeah, man, I started in the restaurant business when I was 17 years old, started from the bottom, literally, you know, a host and a dishwasher all the way up into, you know, AGM and general management back of the house. I mean, I was recipe development all the way back into corporate. Uh, I was doing corporate training, developing restaurant development, uh, doing all the budgets for breaking down food and all that kind of stuff. And, I had an allergy. A lot of you know my story. If you don't, you can you can look it up. But I'm allergic to beef and some other oils and fats, and it really thrust me into a big game hunting world. I was born and raised a bird hunter. I got turkeys behind me. I have ducks. I have bags of ducks and and geese and you name it. But a bird hunter is what I was. And so I went to Wyoming for my first hunt when I was this is 11 years ago now. Yeah, it'd be 11 years. So 2009, one of my first antelope hunt by myself, well, me and a buddy, but he walked one way, I walked another way. We hunted for a week, the hardest hunt of our lives. Neither of us knew what we were doing. Got an antelope down, tried to gut it and skin it with a pocket knife, like an old Swiss army pocket knife from Christmas when I was 13 <laughs> and just hated big game hunting, hated everything around it, hated the meat when I got it home. 
Uh, but there was this notion growing up that if you, if you kill it, you eat it. And so I really devoted the rest of that six months until bird season, really focusing on how to eat this antelope. And it really opened my eyes when companies and people on social media, because again, this is back in 2009, really YouTube hadn't taken off. It was still for like crazy nut shots and Instagram was still not really anything. There was no Twitter. There's no TikTok. There's no, you know, Facebook was still Facebook there. And, uh, companies started reaching out to me to write recipes for them. I'm like, dude, I'm, I just work in a restaurant. Fast forward, you know, to four and a half years ago, I quit my job. I quit a corporate job in a restaurant with a lot of money to pursue this idea of helping people out and starting a company where I'll always answer a question and I'll always be there and I'll give up my hunt to help someone else hunt. And it's now exploded into, you know, companies that are huge in the industry backing me and, I mean, in the past four years of this, I've taken out over 300 brand new adult hunters, not just kids. You put kids in there, it's well into the thousands, but adult hunters taking over 300 adult hunters out. And that's where the industry is thriving. It's awesome to see these other, all these guys out there doing hunting. But for me, it's, I could care less about me. It's all about everyone else. And I have more fun sitting in a blind with a new hunter, which, you know, yep. you were at one of my classes and teaching people how to freaking take out a kidney than I do of like, Hey, look at me. I shot a big buck. Like all these bucks behind me, these are all bucks that after everyone's done hunting, the ranch owner's like, why don't you go shoot a buck? Yeah. And I shoot a buck and, and otherwise it's, I'm shooting does because I like meat. So yeah, that's the, kind, of, uh, kind, of, kind of where it started. The the classes that you do are really cool too, because, uh, and for, if you don't know what he's talking about, Jeremiah does, um, which which I know, I, I think last year's uh, you maybe had a gap year because of your content creation, right? You did no, your Alaska I, trip. Oh, did you do some classes no, I, last year? I did, uh, I did 12 classes oh, okay. in up in near Laredo. Okay. And then we so, did, we did hog and bucks this year. Cause we had a, a lot of guys that were like, I really want to hunt a buck. I really want to hunt a buck. So we yeah. opened up a buck class just cause you know, that's what people you want. Demand. For me, yeah. For me, it's a doe, but for them, they want to shoot a buck and it was, you know, it's a one thirty buck and they're excited to come shoot a one thirty for sure. So what Jeremiah is doing, uh, you know, I did get to go, we had a sweepstakes where we, we had a, another hunt somewhere to the Turkey hunt, had a random winner. And we get to go down to Texas and spend uh, what was it, four or five days with you yeah. um, down there. And, and everybody uh, got to go out, hunt, learn to butcher. And then what was cool was, you know, being there with you and you're pulling out the kidneys and like, all right, this is how we're going to, we're actually going to cook, you know, some of these odd organs that people, people kind of turn their nose up at and uh, had a whole, you know, lineup of stuff that people might normally walk away from. But Jeremiah really focuses on teaching people to use everything from the animal. I still, to this day, uh, for my deer, I, I'll actually uh, take the trachea and smoke it for my dog. Cause, and I'd never thought about doing that until you taught me that, but there's, there's just a lot of stuff that people don't think about. And it's not that they, you know, it's okay. Cause everybody starts somewhere, but you've done a great job on teaching people, which is, which is why I'm excited to have this conversation today for anybody that's learning to, to start cooking. And, and I think today we're going to kind of stick around just smoking in general, right? We're probably not going to, yeah. it's not, it's not necessarily specific to wild game, but in general, you've been a great teacher and that's why I invited you into this. Yeah. And, and it, when it comes to grilling and smoking, meat is meat. Like I have guys at church and I have, I just had an Instagram guy today. Like, Hey, I'm smoking a brisket. Tell me how to, how, what's the process? How, I know it's 18 hours, but, and I, even though I haven't cooked beef myself in 11 years, the process behind creating a perfect piece of meat is meat. Right. And like, and once you understand temperatures and controls and flavor profiles, you could take a turkey, a wild turkey and a domestic turkey and cook turkey meat. It's yeah. just how it is. So yeah, for sure. And and what's funny is sometimes uh, my friends, I'll make a wild game dish, and and they'll say, "Hey, I'd like to be able to do that." And I'm like, "Well, here's the only thing. My my dish was with a lean meat, and if you go buy uh, something from the store, it's going to be you know corn fed at the end. They're all like super fatty. You you could do it, but it's not going to be exactly the same thing. Like sometimes you have an advantage with with the wild right. game, depending on the dish. Right. So no, and then it's and it's going to take longer sometimes with that fat because fat needs to break down if you yeah. have a wild game the fat's not breaking down the meat's cooking or if you have a domesticated beef or cow or whatever it's you're waiting for that that fat to break down at a certain temperature yep yep so uh you know we could we could do i i've again i've cooked with jeremiah and watched him do his thing and i know we we could do a dozen different discussions but for this first one it's it's summer people are grilling out probably more than ever given the, the pandemic situation and 
I really wanted to kind of talk about the, the grill and smoker aspects for today. And I'm excited about this because Jeremiah is a hardcore pellet grill guy. I'm hardcore ceramic. I, I, I We both have an appreciation for how the other one does it. Um, I actually, I really want to get a, a, a pellet smoker eventually just because I want to have like a deck full of all the options. Um, but it's going to be cool because we'll hear... We're going to hear about his process, and I'll, I, if, if, if there's any opportunity to, I'll provide a little perspective of how that's different when I do it. But um, overall, I really wanted to talk about the gear that you're using with your setup, and we'll actually start with, with your, your grill and smoker of choice. And I know you know a lot about the brand Traeger that you smoke on. Give us a little bit of insight into what you like about these, why you chose to, to work with them. And we'll, we'll disclose that you work with Traeger that uh, do a lot yep. of great work for them. But, um, I, you know, from, from being around Jeremiah a lot, we cooked on a Traeger when we were in Texas together and, um, I, I can just, I'm, I'm really impressed with them. And actually, uh, you know, I've told you, I've actually sold a few of them, uh, to friends and family because of you and the experience I've had with them. I like these girls a lot. Too. So, so talk a little bit about it, man. Tell us which model you're using and, and what you like about the Traegers. Yeah, I think it's funny that you say that because even your employees reach out to me for discounts. <laughs> uh, they're like, don't, don't tell Brad. But yeah, the, yeah. Um, no, yeah, I gave out a couple. No, this Traegers during this pandemic, I know they're all barbecues and grills, but I know Traegers on back order for like three to four weeks just Are because they? the amount of influx. I mean, I gave out 43 discount codes in the past three and a half months. So yeah, it's crazy to crazy to think about. But for me, I mean, as you said, you want a whole patio full of them. I've got it's an, it's an obsession. I have, a, I have a 12 by 12 patio. I live in a townhome. I'm, I don't have this big property. I live in Southern California, but my patio is filled with grills and smokers, <laughs> not just Traegers. There's yeah. every grill and smoker that I've had out there from a charcoal to a propane to yeah. a pellet to a ceramic. I'm going to have a, a knockoff green egg that someone, one of my neighbors is getting rid of. I'm like, Oh, bring it over here. Yeah. Um, which is so, it the Kamado Joe or is it a different I brand? It's, it's the one from Costco. Yeah. Those, I, I know Costco sells the Kamado Joe's, which actually, if anybody were to ask me to, to buy a ceramic, I would probably point them that direction because they've come a long ways. Yeah. So it's, it's fun to, to try it. I think for me, the best part about Traeger is that it's, it's so user-friendly right off the bat. I mean, yep. you can turn it on and you can start it. And the really cool thing is all the electronics that they've developed into it now, like they have a really cool Traeger app that has recipes. My recipes, Diva Q's, Meat Churches, a bunch of other cool people's recipes that are on there. And you literally turn on your Traeger, click the app, and it sends all the information to your Traeger and it'll pretty much cook it for you. So it'll set all, <laughs> the, it'll set all the temps. It'll set all the temps all the times that I've put in. So someone puts in an elk roast, uh, you know, a 12-pound elk roast. And in the recipe, it's 12-pound elk roast. They push it. They put in the thermometer. And it'll fluctuate the times that I've said to cook that exactly how I cook it with my recipe, my marinades, all that kind of stuff. So on that aspect, it's a nice being a chef where people are, like, asking a million questions. Now it's like, hey, just click it and understand. Like, they can do the whole recipe and then put it on there, and they don't feel like they're going to ruin it, especially yeah. with wild game. You buy a steak from the store door and you ruin it. You're like, ah, oh, whatever. It was a $12 steak. Yeah. You ruin it. You ruin an elk that you've been putting in for, for six years. Yeah. People are very, very nervous because they've spent a lot of money, a lot of time, a lot of effort on that elk. Totally. Don't, and they don't want to jack it up. And I think that's where that passion from hunters comes that a lot of people don't realize is like for you with that Jake, you spent two and a half, three years trying to get that Jake. Yeah. That Jake, that Jake to you probably tasted phenomenal. Yeah. Because, because of the fact that of the time and effort versus going to the store and buying a butterball and be like, yeah, it was a good turkey. Right. This was like, oh my gosh, I yeah. could taste the nodes of whatever. So when it comes to pellet smoking, it's nice just for the fact that it is more user-friendly when you have it. Like with the ceramics, there's a big learning curve. And I Dude, know for I, you, I, you, had, you had a huge I don't tell curve. people to buy them. I, I, if somebody's new to smoking, I'll tell them not to buy one because it is a... It is a labor of love and it is a labor, dude. Like the maintenance on them, it's a lot more maintenance. That's why the Kamado Joes are actually better to look at for some of the stuff that they come with. You don't need to buy the accessories to clean them. Uh, you know, a lot like I think they have um, a basket now that lifts out the charcoal right. and makes yeah. it a lot. And, but the gaskets, I broke an egg lid one time cleaning uh, my gaskets and it was 180 bucks to buy a new one. I, it's just not a good place to start if you don't know that you're going to be into it. And and I like the Traegers because they are, my, my, my father-in-law buys one and, you know, we put it together. He bought the Big Daddy, the Timberline, whatever. Yeah, 13, uh, you know. the 1300, that's what yeah. I have on my patio. Yeah, so he bought that and that's a doozy. Like we, I had to help him put it together, it's so big. 
he goes out there and you know he he does the curing and then boom you know he's smoking the next day and it's all very easy to learn and pick up and you know he's very now he he smokes probably i think he said he uses it three to four times a week because it's it's like an oven you know it's just so well, easy every every person that buys a traeger says the same thing i mean for me when it's it's hot like it's been hot here because we're in southern california and i'm doing baking dishes we did cookies on it i was baking bread on it we were making hamburger buns like i made the hamburger buns took them off put the hamburger patties on and like the wild game hamburgers on and it's like everything was done outside on that and everything has that same flavor that same note and the cool thing was with it is the higher you go, the less smoky flavor you get. Yeah. And so because it's just becoming a convection oven, it's becoming a right. circulated oven with the air. And so that's why I like it just for the, you know, the user friendly. And I get made fun of a lot by these authentic smoker guys. Cause you, know, you got to use charcoal. You got to use this. You got to use that. The problem is, is living in a town home. I can't have an open flame. Yeah. I can't use charcoal. I can't use, you know, I've got yeah. even my propane one I can get in trouble with because it produces too much smoke constantly. And so you look at these things, it's like, I don't live out in the middle of sticks or I can have, you know, yeah. a smoker that, you know, turn my old refrigerator into a smoker. Like I actually have to. So on that aspect of it, but again, I can still have cooked on all of them. I love all of them. I have the Traeger 1300, the, the Timberline. I've got a 780 up there. I also have um, an Ironwood. I have one of each model. What's the little and travel each, one that, that they have? The too? Ranger. Don't, I have yeah. the Ranger. Yeah. I was thinking yes, you had one of those. The Ranger is a little box. And then I've also got like a Pro 22, which is like the little tailgater. Yeah. It looks like a Traeger, but it's like a mini one. But the, the Ranger is great because you can power it off an inverter in your truck. Like we've been out hunting. That's and cool. we've actually, we've been driving to our next spot with that Traeger in the back of the truck plugged into the inside in an inverter. And by the time we get there, like our meat's already cooked. Like we were cooking, bur we were cooking burgers as we're bouncing around the back of the yeah. road. We get there and we pull out and we're eating burgers or dogs. Or that's cool. That's been back there. So there's so many more options when it comes to the little stuff than, I mean, I know I just saw someone post like uh, big green egg made like a little mini egg that their kids yeah. are smoking on. Yeah. Which I think it's pretty awesome, but I don't know. I look for the fact of when I'm trying to teach new people, it's the whole thing. I'm not going to tell someone to go out and buy a $10,000 rifle. Totally. I'm gonna tell yep. some, and, if, and if someone goes to Walmart and buys their pit pro pellet smoker, I'm not going to knock them for doing it. I'm going to explain them how pellet smoker works. Yep. And eventually they're going to get, they're going to get frustrated because it's not doing, you know, cause it's made cheaper and they're going to want to go buy a, a bigger, better one and in the future. And that's fine. But I think in the beginning, it's wherever you feel comfortable. If you're comfortable getting, you know, a, a small little Weber grill and trying to smoke on it, then feel comfortable with it, feel confident and know that we're going to be here to help you. But it's, I think when you, when you up it to like the ceramics or the pellet grills, it just, it takes a lot of that guesswork out of cooking food. Yeah. It makes it a lot more, user friendly. If somebody's never done any amount of smoking, you just mentioned those traditional Weber's, the, uh, even the generic ones, those can be a good way to start and just see if you like any amount of uh, grilling outside. I, 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 I kind of got into it through a cheap one that I bought at Kroger. It was on sale for like 50 bucks or something. And I bought it. I cooked on that for a whole summer. Um, this, this was like 10 years ago when we bought our house and I was like, this is cool. Like I've always, you know, I've, I've cooked on grills before, uh, a gas grill so was kind of what I was used to, but I, I like the idea of charcoal and that really graduated me into the egg because I, I was so into it. I, I was trying to figure out how to do indirect cooking on that, that generic Weber. And it was more difficult than, uh, what I wanted to do. And I ended up deciding I wanted an egg. And, um, but now I do typically recommend that people really go the, I've, I've, I've definitely sold more Traegers than I have ceramic cookers for this reason. Yeah. I know. Uh, I always get, Hey, do you have a code for <laughs> my You're going to get hit up for a lot of codes uncle. now. Uh, but the, which if, if somebody's really look, I, I wouldn't recommend the Timberline to anybody that was new to it. Cause it's so massive. And it's, it's like, I mean, you could cook like four giant pork butts and five burgers on that thing or like, what uh, on the, I've done 10. 10, 10, 10, 10 pork butts on <laughs> the, the Timberline for church. Yeah. I mean, it's, so, it's, it's definitely overkill for like a family of four or five. So what's a, yeah. what's the good model to look at to, as like your first smoker, that's not going to be, you know, if you, if you, if you entertain a little bit, it's not too small, but it's, it's also not so big that you're over committing price wise. I tell everyone always, when they ask me, I said, you got to go for the pro series. Um, it's the introductory series, but it has all the bells and whistles. Um, so you've got your, your 575 and your 780, and that's just your overall grilling space. And a lot of people are like, oh, the 575, I'm going to go for that one. I'm like, if you're going to cook on it, trust me, go for the 780. It's like 200 bucks more. And then every person that does it goes, man, I wish I would have bought. Just for the fact of 
you think, well, it's, you, you, you look at the price wise, but 780 is where I tell everyone it's the perfect size for a family of like four to five. Yeah. I mean, even, even six, you can put, I mean, how many, I said one, two, three, four, one, three, six, nine, 12, like 15 burger patties on there at yep. one time, 16 burger patties on there at one time. And so you can do, you know, four or five racks of ribs on there. You could do six pork butts on there. You can do five whole chickens on there. So there's tons and tons of room yeah. for, for what you're going to do. Plus it has the, the, the Wi-Fi, which is like the Wi-Fi technology. Yeah, so you man. can be sitting, I mean, I, I've i been sitting at church and my thing goes off. It's like, ding, ding, you're at temp. And I'm like, look down, pastor's preaching. And I'm like, all right, set to just hold. Cause that's ah, cool. Thing. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you can change no, it. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. yeah tr- Traeger, you can change the temps of it. So I just put it on hold mode. So it drops it down to like 155, 160 degrees and it holds that temp at that's awesome at that temp. And so it's nice because you're not worrying about the whole process of it. You're you're doing it. So well, I was gonna and that kind of leads into my next question. And I think my the seven eighty is what my brother in law ended up buying too. Uh, the one thing one thing I was gonna ask you about was like the all the wireless technology that's built into the Traeger. Um, but but you know, they got a lot of set it and forget it settings. Can you talk through through what to consider with those wireless settings and then and then we'll kind of jump into probes and thermometers from there like what comes with the Traeger and, and so that people aren't trying to figure out their thermometer you know because you, you do have a great option with the Traeger but then we'll also after that we'll kind of talk about what you use when you don't have a Traeger yeah I think the biggest the, the biggest and the coolest thing is a lot of times people go to Costco to get a, a Traeger the problem is if you know anything about Costco Costco uses older technology to keep it cheaper for people to buy. So even if you go buy a laptop, they're going to use less technology. That's why it's cheaper. So it might look the same, might have all the same specs, but if you look at actually the, the RAM or the memory, it's going to be different. Same thing applies to pellet grills. A lot of times these guys will go get it. It's not going to have all the new bells and whistles because they want to keep it at a lower price point. So they're using and that, that wireless is technology. not on all the Traeger models because it's new, right? It's not. So any of the new pro series, any of the new, and I have guys like, Oh, I'm just going to go for the old pro 34. I'm like, it's a hundred dollars difference, man. Go yeah. through all the well, bells and whistles go- and all the new stuff, the new auger, the new everything. So well, you're going to spend a hundred bucks on a thermometer anyways. Oh, this, yeah, this one right here is $110. Yeah. Um, and so it's, that's the biggest thing, but what comes with it is you've got a probe option. You've got all L, you know, LCD adjustable screens that you can do, uh, the app, which runs through your Wi-Fi on your house, uh, allows you to control the entire grill from start to finish. I was in a tree stand in Alabama, true story. And my wife texts me and she goes, Hey, we want to have steaks for dinner. I already pulled out elk. I already did this. I don't know how to work your Traeger. And I was like, all right, just go outside and turn it on. So she literally just pulled the button, turned it on. And I controlled everything from my phone in a tree stand in Alabama. I love it. I was like, all right. I was like, and I will text you when it's done. And so she put the steaks on and left them. Right. I controlled, she, I, she put the probe in. So I knew the temp of the steaks. I get my alert on my phone. I text her. I said, Oh, Hey, I just shot a deer and your steaks are ready. <laughs> she goes and she goes out and she gets her steaks and they were perfectly cooked and she didn't have to worry about it. So that's the cool technology that comes with it. Uh, that's awesome. The, 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 the thermometer is really cool for the fact that you can plug it in. And it, like I said, it runs everything through your phone. Yes. It shows the LCD screen. Yes. It pulls it up. There's like new now companies are buying into that. There's a lot of these Wi-Fi coming out because of what Traeger did with, with their Wi-Fi, But the probe is within about five degrees. Like most probes are going to be, they're going to be within that five degrees. And sometimes you'll you'll have people that are like, man, it's just so off. Well, the problem is, as I've noticed is people take the probe out and they set it next to the grill. That grill's getting 500, 600 degrees on the outside where they did. And so it's just, it's throwing off calibration. Yeah. So the cool thing is they have a whole calibration system now where you can, you know, put it in a glass of cold water, calibrate it 32 degrees and it's done. But one new thing they had this year was a pellet sensor. So there's this pellet sensor that's on top and it senses the amount of pellets through light. So it's reflecting oh, light, nice. and re- yeah. reflecting light back up to it. And it's telling you the amount of pellets. So you'll never run out of pellets again. You'll never run out of, you know, cause there's times you're doing a buddy of mine at church. He was doing a 18 hour smoke on a brisket and he goes, man, I was up all night. Like, Oh my gosh. Yeah. You know? And so for, Father's Day, his wife bought him a pellet sensor to add to it because he has an older model. And so now he's all super stoked because now he can go to bed. And if it gets low, it's going to send him an alarm to his phone. He can wake up, fill it up yep. and do all that kind of stuff. So to me, those are the cool things is that pellet sensor, the Wi-Fi technology, and then of course, being able to probe it directly from it and have that temp. I, I, I can be sitting there watching the ball game and look down and see that the ribs are ready. 
Yeah. Versus having to get up and open the lid. Because when you open the lid, you lose heat, you lose yeah. smoke, you lose flavor. And, and you can, that suction, you know, is going to change the temp. That's the thing with the eggs. Um, if you, every, if you're looking, you're not cooking, you know, and it'll also, when you, when you open that up, there's this big whoosh of oxygen. A, it's dangerous. You'll burn off your eyebrows. I've done it. Um, but, but I get, literally my wife one time watched me, I like forgot to burp it and I picked it up and all the, like all the way up and all the ox oxygen hits that flame, you know, uh, you can right. do that. But also when you, um, I think I was going to mention another reason if you're not sure you want to, to get into the ceramics yet, the, the thing to consider on a long smoke like that, it can be stressful. If you don't know how to pack the bowl, right. To be able to burn evenly, you're, you're going to have a hard time maintaining temp. And that might be another reason to just go the Traeger route. If you're not experienced in that and want to make, I mean, eggs, whether it's a, whether it's an egg or a Kamado Joe, those are an investment. So I will say from like experience of having a fire go out in the early days when I was learning to do it, I had a pork butt or a brisket or something on there. It was a long 18 hour deal and it went out and, uh, we were cooking for a party and I think I ended up staying up like all night and waking up every few hours and checking on it. And it was so awful. Yeah, it's, it's like, just, it's like it's having just, a puppy and having to let it out. <laughs> well, and that's, I mean, I, again, I grew up charcoal grilling yeah. and charcoal smoking and when I first got introduced to pellet grills, I'm like, what? Is, this is not real smoking. This is not. And then I went, oh my gosh, I'm not spending 14 hours in the backyard yeah. checking on it. I can actually enjoy my, I can actually go to the store. I can actually, and it's maintaining that stuff. And I'm still getting incredible flavor, incredible textures, incredible everything else. The, the smoke rings are exactly the same on yeah. yours and mine. Yeah. It's, so yeah. that's, again, I'm not here. I, I could care less what you do it on. Just do it. Yeah. And I'm going to, I'm going to say Traeger cause you know, they pay me to write recipes and I love you. I mean, I truly love their product. I've had three other pellet grills that I've given to other people. I'm like, just take it. Yeah. You know, and, and now I've got Traegers up the, you know, now everyone I know has a Traeger. So it's easier. For, it's sort of like that iPhone versus Samsung. Yeah. Like you're going to prefer what you're going to prefer. You're going to complain. I'm going to complain. But if you get a Samsung, I'm not really going to be able to know how to help you as much. I'm yeah. still going to be able to tell you some basics, but it's the, it's the same deal. Like if you've got a problem with the egg, I'll be able to tell you some things, but Brad's going to tell you a lot more. Yeah. When it comes to pellet smoking, I'm going to be able to tell you a heck of a lot more than he is. He's still gonna be able to tell you some basics. Yeah, totally. So, but I there's don't... so many, there's so many groups out there that you can be a part of. I mean, go wild's a great one just for the fact that you can go in there and type in a keyword, you know, yep. and, and look at stuff and you can look at grilling, but even on Facebook, like, I yep. get asked to be on a freaking Traeger Facebook groups all the time. And it's, it's annoying. Cause it's like, yeah, those hey, forms are the I... way to go. Yeah. Oh, it's, they're insane and yeah. they're, it makes it so easy and, you know, just makes it effortless for the fact that you can just continually to cook and, and find a group that's passionate with you and excited to be cook with you and, you know, get a group of friends. Like we have a Traeger boys is what we call it. It's a text group. And every time someone buys a new Traeger, I add them to it. There's like 44 men on that Traeger <laughs> at, on that. And someone posts a picture and brrr, yeah, it's, awesome. it's cool because they don't know each other, but they know each other through food. And it's, it's cool. Cause it's not just, you know, that, that guy that cooked that 18 hour smoke, he, this is, it was, just, he, he got a Traeger for Christmas Yeah, and this is his first real smoke. And he was, I mean, every He's five minutes, what do I do this? What do I do this? How do I do this? How do I do this? And then he took it to dinner and he, the smoke ring was, you know, a quarter inch thick. And he was just like almost in tears when all the guys were like, Oh, oh yeah, man. So awesome. And I, so, and I'm always trying to help people with, with smoking. Cause it's, it is overwhelming when you've never done it. Even on a Traeger, the first one feels overwhelming. Like, cause you just never right. done it. And you, you can read, there's still ways you can screw up. I mean, if you pull meat straight out of the fridge and throw it on a smoker, you're going to screw it up. You got to let it sit and get that temperature warmed up. Cause otherwise the, the tannins of that smoke out of that smoke are going to cling to it and it's going to be bitter. Like there's stuff you have to learn over time. Oh, and also but, the different woods that you use. Yep. Like people think they can throw in anything. If you throw in mesquite, like mesquite, Mesquite is very, very, very sour when it's yep. smoking. Now, if you're grilling with mesquite, the flavor is yep. beautiful. But if you're smoking with, especially wild game, it's going to make that elk taste like you dipped it in pennies. Yep. Like I'm not, not, it just is yep. using all alder, the same sort of deal with you using alder. Yep. You know, I tell everyone, they're like, well, what, what, what type of pellets or what type of wood should I get? I said, in all honesty, start out with a maple, a hickory, an oak. An oak is going to be really, really mild in flavor. I do a lot of fruit woods on the the egg. Do you smoke with the fruit wood mixes yeah, that apple, Trigger has? Apple, yeah. yeah, apple, cherry. But it, again, it all depends on what meat I'm cooking. Yeah. It depends on the flavor. Like if I'm cooking poultry, using that lemon wood, that apple wood, that stuff's going to add a great flavor. I'm not going to add, I'm, I'm not really going to do oak with it. But if I'm doing, you know, an elk roast, that apple to me isn't the flavor I want. But yeah. using, you know, they've got a wild game blend that has 
three different oaks and rosemary in it. And it's, oh, that's cool. It's insane. Like, and that's where you kind of get in the pellet smoking world is you can get all these cool blends. Yeah, that is that cool. You, that you would have to be doing yourself and getting chunks of wood and or other briskets and, you know, or briquettes and making your own. This is, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm literally sitting next to 900 pounds of Traeger bags right now. Cause they yeah. sent me a pallet. So awesome. Um, let's, let's hit the, what's that thermometer you said you're using? I mean, I know what it is, but tell people what you're using that. Yeah, that... this is th from Thermoworks. Uh, I'm going to have Brad put the link to my five favorite Thermoworks that are in here, um, which is pretty awesome. And this is what they call their thermo pen mm -hmm. and it's an instant read thermometer pen. You literally shove it in and it gives you an instant read within five seconds of around the temperature you're looking for. And Those are probably the most popular it. out of, you know, across not even just wild game, but like the barbecue community in terms of an the instant. Whole, the whole cooking world. Yeah. The whole cooking world. Like in the restaurant business, every chef that we had had one of these in their pockets. Yeah. Just for the fact that they, a steak, um, you know, any sort of roast are going out. Even, even we would do line checks and they'd be temping the mayo and the pickles and the oh, yeah. and everything like that. Yeah. I mean, you, you, it works both ways. It drops right. all the way down. It goes all the way up. Yeah. Those are great. So this is, this is great too. When you're, when you're thawing meats and you've got that big package, um, and you don't, and it's an instant read. So I've got my, my main two probes in two of my summer sausages, but I'm cooking 15 of them and I've got two different temperatures. I can now go to another, I can go to all of them and temp it to get an average temperature of what all my things are. And um, they're, they're okay. kind of expensive off the bat but they last forever. Yeah. And you're going to spend rather... a bunch of money buying crap thermometers. If you try to get them at 30 and 50 bucks a pop, I've done it, you right. know, before I right. found the one I like, I was actually going to show right. too uh, the one I, for, for anybody that like doesn't have a Traeger, but wants to have some, something similar to the technology of knowing and being a little bit remote. This is Bluetooth. They might have a Wi-Fi version of this. Now I've had this one for years though. And it's a, this is uh, uh, actually Weber bought this company. It's iGrill. I think they have an iGrill three out now, but it's a little bit smaller. Yeah, my dad. Did my he dad get the has three? It. it has. I think it has four different probes. You can yeah, get in. yeah. The two has four probes. The the three they might have condensed down, and I don't think it has this big screen on it now. But this syncs up to your phone, and it has a lot of controls. It'll give you recommendations on temperature uh, settings depending on how you want the meat cooked. So if you can't spring for a Traeger and you got an extra hundred bucks and you want to have some of that control. Those are great, and I, I've, I'll tell you, I, the, the, the thermometer itself, like the actual, uh, th this part, is, is very durable. It'll sit out in the rain, and uh, it'll last a long time. You will be buying the probes, um, you know, fairly, not fairly often, but they'll last. Uh, depending on how much you smoke, like over time, they just kind of wear out. And what I've found, um, high heat is a killer on them. Like you got to keep them away from high heat. And the way I always do a temp check before I go outside, it, just a glance, um, I'll look at it and it's like roughly 70 degrees in the house, right? 70, 75, whatever. If it says like 40, you know, I know something's wrong with my probe and that's a huge swing. If you're trying to right. temp check meat, um, it's okay if like five degrees is one thing, but a 30 degree, which when they go bad, they'll go 20, 30 degrees one way or another. But I love that thing. Um, the thermo pins are, are better. I, I mean, I just know that that's more of an industry standard, but if you really were into the idea of having a four probe system that you could check on your phone and an app, that's a nice one too. And on those links that I'm going to send you, there's on that thermo works, they've got what's called like the smoke and they've got what's called the dot, the blue dot. And the smoke's the same sort of system that you cool. have. It's got the different probes and you can set it. And again, it's all through your phone. So you can check all that stuff on your phone and watch it all. Um, but one thing to temp stuff, I know you said you walk outside is a lot of guys, they'll take a cold, like if they're drinking a cold beer, they'll take that thermometer and shove it in their cold beer and they'll read a temp off that cold beer. And I know it sounds, it it says sounds crazy. Cold, cold as the Rockies. Cold, yeah. Yeah. It's like <laughs> blue, blue mountains going up. Um, and so I know it sounds crazy, but take that, shove it in your beer and get it and get a probe. I don't, I don't drink beer. So I usually just shove it in my ear and get an at me on my 97.6. Yeah. There you go. Um, <laughs> Or I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Just, but you can also, I know, I know it's crazy. Those people using those thermometers to temp everyone to go into restaurants. Those, those work really well to get the outside temp of meat too, if, or yeah. your grill, if your grill's too hot, especially if you're cooking on an egg and you can't really determine the temperature where your hot spots are. If you yeah. get one of those, those infrareds, you can actually find your hot spots or even on a Traeger. I know exactly where my hot yeah. spots are on my Traeger. If I want a, a char on something, I'm like, Whoop, you're going to go yep. sit right there. If I don't want it, I scoot it to this spot. So getting one of those two, but those, again, all that adds into money. So find something that fits your budget that you're going to like and you're going to use. And I mean, I get these pens 
and I give them out um, to all my friends just for the fact like it's a great Christmas gift. Yeah. It's a great birthday gift. It's a great everything, especially if you know someone that's a good griller. You're like, dude, you know, I want to give it and you, you give them a pen or you give them an instant read, all that kind of stuff. And they're so excited for it. But I think to me, a thermometer is the most important tool Absolutely. for any griller smoker. Everyone asks me, hey, how long do I cook something? Time means nothing. Yeah. Temperature means everything. Yep. Because that three, two, one system on your ribs is great. But if you're not at the temp you need on three, you're going to need to cook it longer before you even get to two and you even get to one. And so understanding temperatures versus times was something that I had to learn because I followed recipes when I first started to the T and stuff wasn't coming out right. And so I really had to, after being in this industry for a long time and getting to work alongside some, you know, James Beard award winning chefs, as well as some chefs through the barbecue world who are like pit masters and grill masters who have won every competition that you can win. And their house is amazing with trophies and they looked at me all and every single one of them, it's times, not temp. Yeah. And I think that's the, that's the biggest thing. So you, temp, you need not, to get your, did you say it backwards? Temp, not time. Did I, yeah, did I say go. time, not temp? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, wait, wait, <laughs> it's those, it's those T's. Yes. Temperature is key. Time is irrelevant when it comes to grilling and smoking. Man, I, I've tried Does, to t- so many people ask me like, Hey, I got a 10 pound pork, but how long will it take? And I'm like, I don't know. Give or take two hours. Cause it, it really depends on the animal. Even, even on oh, store bought yeah. stuff, it'll vary, but wild game. You're t- I mean, it, it's really hard to guess, you know, sometimes, I mean, sometimes I'll smoke a brisket, you know, an, an elk brisket and it'll take me four hours to reach temp. Yeah. It's just, I'm like, okay. And I cut it. It's perfect. Yeah. Sometimes it'll take nine hours to reach temp. Yeah. You know, I had a buddy that was, he was, he sent me a thing. Hey, I, want, I got this. These two pork butts, I want to smoke them on my Traeger. How long? He goes, oh, I'm looking at recipe, probably like 10 hours. I was like, bone in or bone out? He goes, uh, bone in? What does that even matter? I was like, okay, you got to add five hours. Yeah. Like, it's once you understand stuff, and he was he was all excited because he goes, man, I'm so glad you told me that because if it was at my hours, it wasn't even, it was like still at 180. Um, so, uh, yeah. But again, one thing I do is, with um, slow cook stuff is I'll, I'll cook it the day before because you know, like it's so hard to, uh, on some of the stuff that takes so long unless you're going to start at like midnight um, the like pulled pork if I'm doing that for a party I'll, I'll do that the night before or the day before and then just reheat it in the oven and it, it it's so fatty it warms up great now if you're doing wild game there's some other things to consider on how you're going to reheat and whatnot but uh, a, a lot of like a brisket or something, 18 hour smokes, you're not going to get that done right on time. Like there's so many variables in there. That's a risky thing to try to time up that you're s- pulling and slicing an hour before the party. <laughs> so here's a, uh, here, here's a little restaurant industry secret just for you. Everyone watching, everyone listening and for Brad, when you're reheating meats, if you have a vacuum sealer or a Ziploc bag or whatever, if you put all that meat into a vacuum bag and vacuum seal it and then throw it into a boiling pot of water, you're going to almost, you're going to sous vide it in a sense back up to temperature without changing so much of the, the cook temp. Um, so if you think about when you're cooking, if you're throwing your pork, shredded pork back into the oven, right? You're now losing a lot of that fat and it's going to start mm-hmm. to get dry on top. And you're going to have to mix. You're going to have to get, if you take all that into a couple of vacuum seal bags and throw them into a boiling thing of water and bring it up to temp that way, all that fat that was now congealed on there when you put it in there is now cooked back into that meat and it's going to keep it um, super tender super moist same thing with sliced brisket sliced beef all that stuff if you lay it all in a vacuum seal bag and throw it in there and you cook it it's not when you reheat it it's not going to cook it it's just yeah. going to reheat it that's and good so that's, a big, that's an industry thing that we've done but we've done it where i mean we cook i cooked for 150 high school students and i cooked 19 pork butts i think for them and we vacuum seal them all. And then I got a big metal like trough from Home Depot and we boiled water in that over two propane burners. And we threw all those bags in there and reheated all that pork and pulled it out. And we were just pulling pork out of that, putting it on burgers and you know, burger buns yeah. and stuff like that. And it's just, that's in the restaurant industry. That's one thing we've learned when you're reheating stuff because it's not changing the meat itself. If you put it in the yeah. oven, you're, you're, con- you're continually cooking that meat versus yeah. reheating that meat. And same thing. So, if you have a vacuum sealer, vacuum seal it the, the night before. You can now throw in your barbecue sauces, anything else you want, vacuum seal that. And then when you reheat it, it's not. It's only going to take 15 minutes to reheat in a, in a boiling and that, pot of water. Those, the plastics don't melt or anything with the boiling. Not like if, it's not that not hot. If you, no, not if you're using like 
sous vide style bags or okay. really good vacuum seal bags. If you're using like a plastic bag, you you don't want it like boiling, boiling. But I've never ever had a problem, especially. Do you like do those, that with your uh, those Weston bags? Yeah, you can get it with Weston bags. That that there's a new company out, Meet Your Maker, which is you, you'll probably see them all over because they're just handing out stuff. They make a really really thick bag also, okay, cut bag. Um, that is awesome for sous viding. LEM makes one for sous viding. Weston okay. makes one for sous viding. Just find a, a thick bag, um, a thick vacuum seal bag, and I'm telling you, it's going to change. It's going to change it. To the, it's not going to add any extra flavor. It's going to use. Yeah. You're just going to continue to reheat it. And, but that's what we did in the restaurant business. If we cooked, you know, we cook soup and we'll vacuum seal all our soup, and then it's like, hey, we're short on soup. We take that and put it in a boiling pot of water. Brings the soup up to temp pour it in and we can keep serving soup versus sitting there trying to stir soup and changing the actual yeah. flavor of the soup by on a grill and a pro. And so it works with all meats, works with all macaroni and cheeses. If you don't want it to get soggy again, same thing, take that leftover, put it in there, throw it in that bag and it's going to read it. And guess what? This thermo pen, when you think it's a temp, shove it in that bag and you're gonna be able to read the internal temp. And if it's 160 degrees or above, then pull it out, serve it and let everyone enjoy it. So that's a that's an awesome tip. Um, I got twelve minutes left before I got to jump off to something else. So I want to hit a couple other things real quick that I know you brought to talk about. You had um, you had I believe you said a knife and maybe something else. Am I? Ah, uh, yes. So, talk through because th- I'm interested to hear this because I I still do some stuff with foil and I know you're a big anti foil guy. So talk through this. I mean, so yeah, knives. I think having a really really sharp good knife is important to barbecuing just especially if you're trimming off fats and anything else like that you want to get just the fat off you don't want to take off any of the meat so that is but for me getting a good butcher paper when you're doing a long smoke is key pink butcher paper is best just for the fact of it the way it holds the way it looks but you can get white butcher paper uh, but pink is usually made specifically for smoking and grilling and i mean i'll show you traeger makes their own but you can get it from everybody everyone makes this um, I was a key opponent on foil for a long time until I had something that was cooked in that. It's, and it reminded me of when my grandpa used to take brown paper bags. I don't know if, you, if any of you ever remember that back in the day, they would cook stuff in brown bags. So Thanksgiving turkeys would be in a brown bag. Mm, if yeah. they were doing long smokes, they'd throw them in a brown bag and they'd put it on that. And what it, what it does is as the fats and juices go into the, go into that butcher paper, it actually absorbs and kind of makes a shell and a crust versus where foil, it's going to continue to cook at a higher and faster temp in there. Cause it's actually creating uh, a steam pocket. Yeah. And so it's steaming inside there where the butcher paper, it's not steaming. It's allowing it to cook naturally and allow it to cook all its stuff versus that steam, as well as if you're trying to build a crust or a bark, if you're doing it in, in foil, you're not going to build a crust. No, you can't. Cause there's, there's too much moisture within that foil. And especially with all the fat, the fat's going to sit down in that, in that, foil it's just going to keep cooking boiling and it's going to keep up the heat you're gonna have a different texture on the bottom than you are on the top with this butcher paper it allows all that fat to suck into the paper itself and it allows for a better even cook it takes off all the grease because the grease is what sucks into the paper and leaves all that nice cooking fat as it renders so, so are you wrapping that and just sitting it straight on the grate or do you have a pan under it like what nope, what do you no straight on straight on the grate so it so holds just like that would, well on, on all the juice. It doesn't leak at all. You might get a little bit of leakage in the very beginning, but for the most part, no, I mean, I'll, I'll put down a foil, you know, drip tray underneath, like on the bottom yeah. of my Traeger, not. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm getting very, very minimal okay. uh, droppage in there, but it's, to me, it's changed the game and everyone that I cook for it. They're like, oh, I'm not going to go buy it. But the yeah. best thing is this is, this is like 15 bucks for like, 750 no it's got to be more than that i mean i've had this it was this thick right yeah I, i've had this for like two years okay it just doesn't it, it seems like it doesn't go away um, i've been meaning to ask you about that i'm glad you brought it up so that's definitely something um i'll have to look into and, and pick up myself because i'm still i like if i wrap up I, I do like the texas crutch where you right before the stall on a pork butt you wrap it and you know it powers right. through and doesn't stall for people that don't know what i'm talking about like the temperature will drop on a big chunk of meat when it starts sweating and so you can power through that when, instead of hitting 165 and then it drops to like 158 over two hours, which is very discouraging when you're trying to get this thing to be done. Right. If you wrap, it'll it'll power through. So is it the same concept with the butcher paper yep. and everything? It still powers yeah. through? Same, yep, yep, same exact. And you're going to have, it's probably going to take a little bit longer just for the fact because you have to allow it's that not, fat. Yeah. But you're going to realize it's going to be a lot, it's going to absorb all that grease. 
And that's the biggest thing is, is when you're looking at the cooking is the grease is going to be hotter than the fat. I know that mm-hmm. it, it does, doesn't make sense to a lot of people, but if you think about when you're, you're cooking a chicken and you take all that reserve and you dump it in, you'll see all that fat raised to the top. And then you'll see on top of the fat, you'll actually see a grease layer. And so it's different parts of the fat. It's two different types of fat that are, that are cooking. And so that pink butcher paper is actually going to absorb the grease, absorb that, that negative fat. And it's going to allow the positive fats to continue to cook. It's going to help through the stall. It's going to help with the very, very little amount of fat and moisture that's in wild game. Um, so like even for like an elk brisket or a, a venison loin or something like that, if I wanted to go longer and kind of shred a little bit, then I will wrap it. If I don't, I want to slice it. I'm not going to put it in there. Mainly this butcher paper is if you want something to shred, if you want something to last, or if you have to wrap, if you read a bris- brisket and it's like after the first um, 10 hours, take it out, wrap it for the next eight hours through the stall. But butcher paper is going to help because again, foil is going to add, it's going to add that moisture, a, a negative moisture. I've always, sense, cause it's going to steam it. I've always also felt like there's only so much smoke that you're going to be able to absorb anyways. So after, you know, I don't know what point this is and this is, I'm not, I'm not a professional. I'm just a hobbyist, but the, it always seems to me like there's a certain point where you're not really packing in that much more smoke flavor. You know, your smoke ring, it's not like a smoke ring gets indefinitely deep, right? Like, uh, over no. time, over time, it kind of hits its limit. I mean, do you, do you think that, is that to be true? I guess I'm asking. Yeah. A professional. Yeah. Once you, once you hit that crust layer, the, the meat, that's why I always tell everybody, they're like, Oh, I really want to like, how did you smoke that burger? Okay. So I put it on smoke for the first three minutes of it cooking. Then I hit up the tent, you know, and then I bumped up the temperature yeah. and let it continue cooking. Cause what happens is meat is very porous. I mean, I've told Brad this before. It's like a sponge. It's full of holes. It's very porous. Once the, the meat permeates and it starts to cook, those pores are going to meld together. And it's going to be create a crust or a seal on top. If, if you think about a burger patty, a perfect thing for a burger patty, put a burger patty on and all of a sudden that edge of that burger patty is going to start to char up and crisp up, right? No more stuff is going to be able to get through that. Just like you're not going to see very much moisture coming out of that. So the moisture has to go through the top or through the bottom. The same thing is going to happen if you have a large surface of meat. Once you build that crust on there, you can only really permeate so yeah. much of that smoke. An 18 hour smoke with an intense smoke is going to have the same layer of ring as a five hour intense, you know, super yeah. intense smoke. And it's going to add the same flavors. So again, people think, Oh, I got to keep it on that smoke. I got to keep it on there. The reason you're doing that is mainly just for you. Yeah. Um, to be able to say you smoked it for 18 hours. Yeah, like sometimes I'll, I'll pull it. a pork butt and stick it in the oven instead. Cause if, once I wrap it, cause it's like, it's not taking right. on any more heat. Um, I don't know. I don't know if that you do that or not. Well, see, that's but, why I, well, no, cause I have a Traeger, which is like an oven if I want it to be. So I can, yeah, but then, that then you're burning through your pellets. That's the part I'm like, yeah, you know, I wouldn't mind saving my, I pellets, save my charcoal for one for mine. Yeah. But I think pellets are cheaper than charcoal sometimes. They might be, but I, either way, I'm just saying like, I don't, to, in my mind, I'm like, well, I'll just stick it in the oven and save my charcoal for later. Right. Once it's right. wrapped, yeah, it's, it's just, just, it's, it's like it's heat, heats, not heat's not heat. Cause there's convection, blah, blah, blah. But, um, I don't know. I haven't noticed that much of a difference with that approach. Yeah, no, I think, and I think that's, that's fair. That's a fair, a fair assessment, fair say, but I don't know. There's, there's something about keeping it on and pulling it off and making you feel accomplished. Yep. But again, if, if it's money saving, then heck yeah, throw it in the oven and. I mean, what is well, gas is way cheaper than our I don't know. electric. Like, yeah, I would say somebody, somebody electric. might, somebody might call me and say, "Hey, it's actually cheaper to run." <laughs> I don't know. This is all in my head. Um, Dude, my gas, my gas bill is nothing. I think yeah. it's like twelve, twelve dollars. Yeah, right. Um, so, so, hey, we got five minutes here. Um, you didn't mention the brand of knife. Do you have a brand of fillet knife that you really prefer? Uh, no, I think just get, if a, I, get a good one. I don't like giving out the brands of like that type of stuff because this knife that I have right here is $460. Right. No one's going to spend $460 and I don't want you to spend $460. Right. I want you to be able to go find a good, I mean, it's, it's that old saying, if you can afford it, get it. If you yeah. can't afford it, don't. And so if you find a good fillet knife that, that works well for you, I mean, you can go to, um, on, you know, Amazon and just type in fillet knives and look, and there's some, there's some big name brands that have introductory fillet knives for like yeah. 40, 50 bucks. Yeah, okay. And they're going to hold great. They're going to work great. You know, Dow Strong is a great brand to start with. It's got introductory knives and they've got all the way to extreme knives. And I've got butcher knives from them. I've got fillet knives from them and they're all phenomenal. Give them a that sh- price range. 
give him a shout out too for your knife sharpener because I ended up buying that thing the 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 one that you use. Oh yeah, WorkSharp. If yep. you if you really want to keep a, an edge on it, WorkSharp makes everything. They make from a grinder to just an edge grinder to they, they just came out with a brand new whetstone. So if you're really again grilling is like sharpening knives. There's people who are passionate about sharpening knives. And so they came out with a whetstone that I sat. My wife made fun of me because for 37 minutes I sharpened my fillet knife. And she's like, it's just, just put it on your other block. And I'm like, but it's different. Yeah. It's different. Um, so they make them all work sharp is huge. Again, I'm going to, I'm going to send Brad a bunch of my favorite stuff. And I'll have him throw it up in the show notes. Um, yep. so yeah, but yeah, it's a, a sharp knife, a, a real knife. You can use a, a knife, but again, cleaner cuts make even surfaces, even surfaces cook better. If it's all chunky and chalky and wavy, it's all going to cook at different temps. If you could take a straight s- slice. The one thing you it. taught me, well, I was going to say, I wanted to throw in there, uh, not just the knife, but how you having a sharp knife lets you make those long, clean strokes. Like I was Correct. a choppy cutter before and uh, I made when fun I, of you. you did. And I, I, uh, I now do it right. So those long, those long bladed fillets really help with that too, though. Um, dude, we got, I got, I, I apologize for booking so close to your interview. This has been really good stuff. Um, I just want to make sure I have time to thank you. This is, this was awesome. I learned a lot listening to you. Anybody that's new is going to learn a ton and they probably took notes. <laughs> it was that good. good so good. Um, I think you, we could come back on and talk about a whole other, uh, slew of stuff. I will say now I'm going to, in my outro of this show, I, I had a couple things I was going to throw out there that I like. And if Jeremiah has other stuff he didn't get to, we'll throw it in the show notes, but we'll, we'll get Jeremiah back on here because we'll do a whole show on like butchering and, and processing too. I think that would be really cool. But this has been, I didn't really realize how applicable well, this would be to all cooking. You know, we really got into, a, um, I'm going to send this to everybody, <laughs> everybody I know Good. that uses a grill. <laughs> I think, uh, you've had some awesome points. I, the butcher paper alone, like that was worth me sitting down for, cause I'm, I'm excited to try that out. So dude, always a pleasure. Uh, yes, love sir. having you on any show. If you really like listen, learning from Jeremiah, go check out the podcast we did. Uh, while, while I've done a couple with him and I don't remember what number this is, but the second one I did with him on restless native, which we'll link to in the show notes was, um, really cool because he did it while processing an animal. And then we cooked it and talked about it together. It was awesome. Yeah. It was a lot harder than you think it would be to talk. Well, yeah. Yeah. But elbow, it's a, elbow deep in the cavity of an animal. So. That's right. That's right. It's a great show. Uh, learn, I learned a lot during that conversation too, but man, thank you so much. This was great. Yeah, man. Thanks for having me on and I can't wait to do it again. All right. All right. Thank you, Jeremiah. I love this guy and he is seriously so willing to help people learn. It's crazy. But speaking of help, I I mentioned that I had a couple other things that I wanted to mention for anybody that's new to barbecuing. Some things that are in my arsenal that I find incredibly helpful to have around. The first is gloves. There are two types of gloves that I use when I'm smoking barbecue. The first is like a typical rubber glove uh, for, for pulling meat, for picking up meat. You can kind of think of this as like giant tongs is how I use it. You know, I can pick up a pork butt without having to get something to pick it up uh, with tongs. You're not going to pull all the seasoning off and all the bark off. These can be really handy. I think they're rated up to maybe 450 degrees. Um, now, that said, you do not want to pick up something that's 450 degrees with these. I would not recommend it. But if you're you're handling a piece of meat that's like 150 degrees that you wouldn't want to pick up with your bare hands, these are the way to go. They don't pull all the all of your seasoning off. They have uh, kind of like a it's like they're called gecko grips, I think. Uh, yeah, gecko grip gloves. If, if I can't find these, I'll link to something else that's similar. There's a lot of different makers of these. You don't necessarily need to have this brand, but I do recommend having these. They're like whether it's chicken ribs or whatever. If you got something that you want to move without ripping all your seasoning off, with like you do with tongs, sometimes these are awesome. I, I use them a lot, especially when you're transferring to kind of, Jeremiah. Kind of mentioned the foil when you're transferring to something like that. These are great to have. Now, there's another set of gloves that I have um, that I use on my egg. You, you wouldn't need this on the pellet style smoker or if you're using a gas grill or like other types of um, smokers. But if you are into ceramics, 
and these are disgusting. I need to wash them. I should have done that before I brought them in. But look, I even have it marked because this one's got a hole right here. <laughs> They've been well worn and I don't want that part touching. So I have my right hand marked. Uh, but seriously, oh, they, they smell like barbecue. I guess they, they kind of smell good. So maybe I won't wash them. And maybe that's like buildup. I got so much buildup of ash on here that it's saving my hands. That's my rationale. That's why I've never washed these. Um, anyways, the, these are great for ceramic cookers because uh, I find these to be a little more resilient than those rubber gloves when I'm picking up, you know, with ceramic cookers, you have hot grates that you're, you're moving around. Those grates get super hot and you have, they make uh, big green egg does make a, a holder. You can, it like, it like goes in, slides in and locks in and you can pull it out. But I like having these because I can then grab my plate setter, which is the thing that goes in the middle to turn it into a indirect cooking, uh, it, it, it pulls the heat around the food and it's not hitting it direct. You need that for any amount of smoking in a big green egg. And that thing gets really hot. So sometimes when you're cleaning or something, or if you're moving the grate around or whatever it is, if you're just handling that, these aren't food friendly, but they're very good for handling the hot parts of the, the, the smoker when, when you're done and you're trying to run through cleanup. So get you some of these. Uh, I don't even, I'll try, I'll try to find these. I honestly picked these up at a hardware store years ago. Um, I, I found them on sale and I was like, oh, that'd be a good addition to my rubber gloves. And it, it seriously has been. So highly recommend finding some high heat, uh, really thick gloves to be able to move some of your parts around. Um, the, the final thing I wanted to mention, a lot of you all are probably cleaning your grills with those metal um, grill cleaners that you know scrub through with the, the wiring. And I don't want to scare you, but there have been some news stories of those things of, of people dying or getting like seriously injured because of eating food that one of those little tiny bristles got into. As you can imagine, that is not fun. I, I may have made up the dying part. I feel like somebody died. Uh, let's not quote me on that part, but there have been instances of people having injuries um, from swallowing those things. And, and, and regardless of whether or not they died, which maybe they didn't, I don't know. I can't remember. I, didn't, I don't have a fact checker. We're working on hiring the fact checker here at Gearbox Talk. Uh, however, the uh, whatever it is, you know, that is not comfortable. That is not good. Eating metal uh, brush tips is never going to be good. And so many people use those things. I'm a big proponent of this, which I'll show you in just a second. Um, you know, you, you don't want those, those things break, they fall off. That bristle pad is only good for like a, I don't know, five, six times. And it starts the, the, the brush, uh, the bristles start moving away. And as they move, the metal breaks. And all of a sudden you got these things all over your grill. Uh, I am not a fan. I am not a fan of using those to clean your grill. What I am a fan of is this. So what I got going on here, this is uh, I think this is called the great scrape. Um, they make, there's several different, no, this one's called the scrape station. Uh, there is a great scrape. I believe they're all the same concept. Uh, I don't, I'm not passionately loyal to a brand on this, but I will say that these wooden scrapers, they, the cool thing is this comes as a very thin, um, straight piece here and it conforms to your grill. So whatever your grill grate looks like, it's going to conform to that. And, uh, so I, this is obviously kind of conformed to my big green egg. That's about how wide my grates are. It's about a finger width. And, uh, the, the thing that I like about this is, you know, it, it might splinter, but, uh, some small splinters would be much better than a metal shard. But for the most part, I've never had any amount of splintering with this. The wood is really, it's a hard wood. Um, I, I've never had any issues with this and I have been using this thing for freaking years, years and years. I mean, you can see it's, it's pretty well worn too. Um, I do clean it, but I mean, just wood, uh, the, the grease and stuff from the grill kind of gets absorbed over time, but this thing is awesome. Mine's built so that I have leverage too, to be able to clean, like get my hand in there and clean. So you can re really push it hard. I, uh, before I close up my egg, my grill, um, I'll, I'll take this to it and try to knock off any loose food down into the coals and let that burn off. And this is just a super helpful thing. It is a cheap investment and, uh, maybe it'll save your life or maybe it won't. Cause I don't know. I don't know what the news story said, but I still feel like you shouldn't eat metal brush tips. Just saying. Okay. If you're ready to buy any of this, I've got links to the gear in the show notes. So, um, it's all right there. You can click through, you can keep exploring. If you want to explore some of those Traeger models that are in there, we've got all that linked to in there. Um, I don't have the big green eggs linked to, or the Kamado Joe, uh, I might be able to find some links to the Kamados. I don't know if they sell those online. Big green egg sells only, um, they sell through, uh, 
uh, hardware stores typically like they're kind of harder to find um, but but you'll have to find a verified retailer of those if that's the direction you want to go however I'm just telling you like if, if you're not going to be in it for the maintenance and you don't want that like the, you don't just set up a big green egg and start smoking either like you do with those Traegers nine times out of ten for people I'm recommending that they start with something like a Traeger. And then if you get hardcore into it and you really want that charcoal flavor, like, like Jeremiah said, a lot of those pit guys, they really crave that and they want that. And there are differences and there are advantages. You know, one, one thing I love about my ceramic smoker is how hot it gets. They get hotter than uh, a pellet smoker. There are advantages to, to each. I don't think anybody would deny that. I'm going to recommend you to really go more that pellet smoker route though. So if you're interested in that stuff, all that's listed in the show notes. Um, and if you're really digging this kind of conversations around food and le- you're learning how to smoke meat, download Go Wild. There's so many people sharing how they cook, uh, whether it's wild game or, or pork butts or whatever it is. So many people are using that platform to do that. You're going to connect with people. You're going to learn there too. So make sure you, uh, that, that link is in the show notes. It's also just download go wild.com. I hope to see you there. I, ho- I hope you join and, and join in in some of these food conversations. I mean, heck we even got recipes. We have recipes built into go wild. So I don't, you're not going to find a better platform for food in my opinion. A final thank you to everyone at Go Wild who makes this show happen. That's our entire marketing and sales team and our engineering team for uh, building the Gearbox system itself, which has more than 250,000 products that you can browse, search, and get people's opinion on. So um, that's it for me today. I hope you enjoyed this conversation. Thank you again to Jeremiah Dowdy. All right, I'm out. (laughs) 